So just let yourself settle in and make sure everyone's gotten in there. Great. Raya's coming in. Welcome everyone who just got here. We're just starting. So find a place. Today we're gonna we're gonna work on um not work necessarily. We're gonna we're gonna enjoy the practice of both owl eyes and deer ears. So um, we'll use both of those together. And so feel your feet on the earth, on your deck, <laughs> on the floor inside, wherever you are, just knowing that the earth is down below you. And how is she feeling this morning on this day of remembering those people who served and looked after us in various ways throughout the years? Those people who gave their lives for our safety and all that. So thinking about those people on this day and just feeling yourself on this earth, blessed as we are to have the lovely earth around us today. So now with your feet firmly planted on whatever <laughs> ground it is, go ahead and find a point off in the distance as far as your eyes can see and just focus on that one point and then allow the rest of your vision just to soften. So just the peripheral vision is just going to get really soft and you're still going to focus on that point in front of you, but then everything else except for that point is going to get really soft in your vision. And just notice what happens both on the exterior, so what you're seeing with your own eyes, and then also what you feel with your body, what you notice within you when you go into owl eyes. And so for those of you who this might be a new practice for, this is what we call owl eyes. You can call it all sorts of things, soft vision, peripheral vision. It's a softening of your peripheral vision, really. And so still with your eyes softened, looking out in front of you or wherever it is that you're looking, that your eyes are drawn to, go ahead and let yourself now bring your awareness. We'll start with our body first. Just take stock of what's happening in, inside your body. Notice if there's any softness in your body, if there's any tension, maybe some anxiousness, Maybe some peace and joy, whatever it may be, just notice what it is and where you're feeling it. You can notice if it's shifted since you first started the practice. And just notice your breath. shallow or is it deep? And then looking at the rhythm of the natural world around you, just with your eyes right now. Of course, you're taking in the sounds too. We'll focus on that in just a moment. Just looking at the rhythm of what you're seeing around you and noticing the rhythm within your own body. Or might it be similar or different from what's happening around you? Now take a nice big deep breath in. We'll do a couple of those and just let it out slowly. And then on one of those breaths, do so with the intention of actually smelling the air around you. And just notice if it smells different today than it did maybe the last time we were sitting together or even just the last time you were sitting in this spot. What might have changed or shifted? And what might be the same? 
Still looking with that soft gaze, being attentive to your breath. Now, we'll go ahead and bring our awareness to our ears. You also want to keep your eyes in this softened gaze, of course, unless you see something that excites you, then you can certainly focus on it and you can even use your binoculars. There's no rules about <laughs> not using binoculars here. So we are here to do a bird sit after all. So if you're not focusing on anything right now, keep your eyes soft. And we'll start with our practice with deer ears by just simply bringing your attention to we'll say like a 10 foot radius around you. So what is a sound that's somewhere within a 10 foot radius of you? And so your eyes soft, keeping your attention in front of you, but just listening for that sound and bring your attention and we'll just stay focused on that sound. Of course, not ignoring the other ones right now, but keep your awareness just let that sound that's within the 10 foot radius just be part of your attention right now. Maybe there's a bird singing off in the distance that you're really enjoying listening to. I know I am. I will mute my sounds. So you guys don't have to hear my birds around here as great as they are. But also, even though I'm hearing the bird in the distance, maybe the traffic as well, I'm going to be attentive to the sound that I hear within the 10 foot radius. So we'll practice this for just a minute or two and then we're going to expand out progressively. Good work. So in our modern world, it's we have to do a little extra work to bring our awareness to the things because we're or to multiple things at one time. We're good at tuning things out as we should. There's a lot of stimulus in our modern world. But as we tune into bird language and get to know the natural world a bit more, it's important to just be aware of as much as we possibly can. And so still looking off in your soft gaze, remembering that your feet are connected to the earth, where your body is in some way. And now expand your circle. Let's go out 50 feet. So you're still gonna be attentive to that sound that was in your 10 foot radius, but now find one that's about 50, let's say 50, 75 feet out from there. And let that one be the dominant sound that you're focusing on right now. So folks have just joined us. We're just settling in and listening to the sounds at different radiuses around us. So we're sitting in owl eyes and we're bringing our attention to a sound that's somewhere within a 50 to 75 foot radius.
Great, nice work. So now let's go out to 500 feet, about quite a distance further. We'll say 500 to 750 feet. And if you don't know exactly what that, that looks like, that's okay. Just kind of guesstimate out there. And see if you can still be attentive to the other two radiuses that we were focusing on, so that 10 foot and then the 50 foot. And now we're out to 500 to 750. Okay, now we're going to stretch even farther. So I want you to imagine, this is going to go out really far now. See if you can send your sense of hearing out as far as a quarter mile away. Again, being attentive to all the other rings of awareness that we were listening in. So stretch it really far, about a quarter mile away in whatever direction you're inspired to listen in. And for some people, that distant sound may be traffic. And I'm going to encourage you to try to listen for a sound from nature, not that humans aren't nature, but something, maybe a bird sound, maybe the sound of water, whatever it may be, that's about a quarter mile away. See if you can listen through the traffic, if that's what you have around you. Maybe you don't, maybe it's all nature sounds.
All right, we're gonna do one more distance. And with this one, really attempting to bring all of those rings together into one body of awareness along with your vision. So remembering to keep your vision soft unless you wanna focus. So now we're gonna send our hearing out to two miles away. So you might say, that's impossible, I can't do it. Just see what happens if you try. Just imagine that you can hear two miles away and all the other rings within that. All right, nice work, everybody. So to send your gratitude or whatever inspiration you might be having in this moment, just bring your awareness to that and you can in silence, give thanks to whatever it is you're feeling grateful for or inspired by right now as we close this portion of our practice. Well, if you need to head out to get to any festivities today or whatever it may be, then uh, you're free to do so. Obviously, you can go whenever you need to. Otherwise, I will stay on for a little while longer and we can take stories, questions, mysteries, whatever folks want to share. It can be about your practice this morning. It can be about, you know, something from the week. Yeah. So folks are welcome to, you can raise your actual hand or you can put your virtual hand up, the little button down below. Awesome, Suzanne, love to hear from you. Okay, got it. Um, I have a ID question for you. Sure. So I'm in Southwest Colorado, right on the upper Dolores River, about 7,300 feet. And I know you're familiar with this part of the state um, yesterday along my riverbank, I saw a lone merganser and I, I am pretty certain that it was a red breasted. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Red, 
red -breasted. Red -breasted, like a female adult red-breasted because the the, cre the crest was real um wispy and kind of like punk rock starish um and the coloring didn't match the common merganser so according to siblings it'd be very rare for a red-breasted to be here do you, do you think it's possible you know, um, Suzanne, that used to happen to me often. It still does sometimes because sometimes the common female mergansers, the crest, it can look really tall, um, taller than like you ever see in the field guy. I and mean, then especially in Sibley, he always he shows it kind of like down and not as like, you know, funky hairdo as the as the red breast it has. Um, mm -hmm. But I have to say, like, I've seen, especially in Colorado, I don't know why, maybe they have, like, maybe they're more courageous and have funkier hairdos. I don't know. But they, um, yeah, I remember that, that that they um, they can have fairly high crests. Um, and so there's a few other markings you'll want to look at. I would say just um, go back to your field guide and just really sit with the two females and look at them side by side and compare and just look for, like, there is there are some markings or some specific markings um, that you can that can help you distinguish one species from the other. Um, that's a better bet than the crest. The crest, I would just say my my sense about the crest that I've learned over the years is that it's not reliable um, as a way to to tell um, the two species apart. So it's not impossible. They certainly have been there. I remember um, on the um, not the Mancus. What's the one in what's the what's the river in Durango? The Animus. Animus, thank you. On the Animus, there there was a red breasted there um, while I was living there. And so um, it's not unheard of. It certainly is possible. So it would be worthwhile to, you know, to check it out in the field guide and get to know that marking because they do show up there for sure. It's not common, you're right, but it's not unheard of. There was a little a, a little flash of white on the um back end of the wing while she was swimming away. And that's that's another thing that kind of caught my eye. Mm. Yeah, for that you want to pay attention. It's like the throat area, this kind of facial sort of throat area that has um, mm. a particular like the distinguishing feature. So I'll just let you look in the field guide and play around <laughs> with those too. <laughs> okay, thank yeah, you. Yeah, great question for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. Love those ones. Um, yeah, I was just going to share with folks and again, still taking questions and, and whatever. But um, for me, one thing that came up for me during this practice this morning that I noticed was that the farther out my hearing got or I tried to send it, the quieter I had to become in myself. Like if my mind was busy, it's like I couldn't I couldn't send my attention out far. And I thought that was that was just lovely for me to, to realize that sort of the more I I guess I focused outward um, and also all around, you know, still try have a, like the, the sound that was close to me was like the leaves rustling back over here and then the, you know, further out and out. So when I tried to bring all those sounds together, it was almost like going into owl eyes, you know, like all the sounds just kind of became sort of one in some ways. But in order for that to happen, I had to get really quiet within myself. And uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know if I've been aware of that before. I wonder if anyone else had any you know again these are always suggestions you don't have to do what i suggest during the sit but if anyone else tried it out i wonder if anyone uh if you all had a similar or different experience or your own kind of experience with this practice today yeah i'm not hi i'm hi. Uh, i'm now in, i'm in israel which is now evening so mm -hmm. i'm home but i can i try to extend my uh, vision and hearing and uh, in fact, what I did was I tried to go up yeah. high above and imagine like uh, from a very, very high point of view, what does it look like and what does it hear like? And, um, and it was amazing because uh, um, during the day I can hear around here a baby crow, which is really nagging its parents. And, and I think he was still there, you know, it's evening now, but I can still hear him and it was beautiful. Beautiful, really, and I've, I felt the same. I felt that when I can relax inside, I can hear better and I can imagine better, which is really great. So I'm very grateful for that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I love the practice of hearing is um, great. Again, you know, if, if there's some 
if hearing is a challenge for you for various reasons, then um, then this could be challenging, or or um, you might just have a different experience. But um, this the sense of hearing is wonderful because you can go out at all times of day. It's something that you don't, you know, like. Of course, it gets limited. Your vision gets limited as it gets darker, but our sense of hearing almost picks up because usually, unless you live in like New York City, for instance. Um, but usually as the night progresses, things start to quiet down more. And so you can actually hear it farther and farther and farther away. Like in, you know, around three in the morning, I can usually hear some birds, you know, usually it's the geese and whatnot, but they're a couple miles away at a pond. And whereas I can't, I actually can't hear them right now. There's just too many sounds happening right now. Um, but it is kind of wonderful. Um, and, and I love the idea of going up. That happened to me a couple of times during the sit too. Like somehow my, the, I was more aware of up, you know, that's, I, I love that you brought that up a not. Thank you. Yeah. I also love that you joined us all the way from Israel. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> Anne, I see your, your virtual hand up there. Yes. Can you, can you hear me? I sure can. Yeah. Yeah. I just um, wanted to share, this didn't happen during the bird sit this morning, but while I've been in North Carolina, this week this happened and I wanted to share it with you, Christy, because it's only because of you that I that I was able to appreciate my experience. Um, <clears throat> since I took your bird course this winter and I've been doing bird sets and, and <clears throat> listening, um, I was out one afternoon late around five o'clock and I was just soaking up. There's so, this, this is a densely wooded area and very bird friendly. And there's just, there's always just all kinds of birds singing and talking. And I was just soaking it up and enjoying it and everybody was happy. And then all of a sudden, everybody went alert. All the birds, their their songs changed. And I was like, whoa, something happened now. And I looked up, and sure enough, there was a hawk spoken in. And I would never have even recognized the change in song or thought to look up for a hawk if I hadn't been learning from you and Molly the last few months. And it was just kind of an awesome moment. Right on, Anne. <laughs> that is so great. Well done. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's like you you just when when you slow down and tap in like this, like you you do you get tapped into the rhythm of what's baseline. And then when something's out of baseline, you feel it, you know, and it's yeah. just like, hold on, everybody, something's going on here. Like, wow. Yeah. And the fact that you got to see it, because I feel especially in like densely wooded areas, it can be really hard to see the source of alarm sometimes. And it can right. be frustrating because you're like, I know something's happening. I know somebody's here. I just can't see who it is, you know, and that's awesome that you actually got to see it. Flip my phone and see there's one little area of blue up there. <laughs> and that's where the hawk is circling. <laughs> wow. How cool. And so, how long, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Of course. And do you remember how long it took before the birds kind of settled back into their baseline behavior? I, I did notice. I was paying attention. And I felt like, you know, I saw one cat through the blue and he took off. And it didn't take him but about three or four minutes to settle down. So I figured he he caused enough of a ruckus, he just moved on. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, they, wow. they calmed down within, I would say probably five minutes they five calmed minutes. down. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Wow. And I never saw the hawk again, and I kept looking for him. It was just that one pass. He had <laughs> he stirred the yeah. pot, and then he flew off. <laughs> yeah 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 oh sweet that's awesome yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> thank you <laughs> yeah for sure and awesome i'm glad you shared that yay lovely sandy hi hi <laughs> uh, yeah i had a couple of neat experiences which i probably wouldn't have had <laughs> right now with us this and um one i'll look up a bird, <laughs> and, uh, but the other one was the two mile um, hearing <laughs> uh, distance, yeah. and I, of course I I couldn't hear it, but I had just measured off like what a mile is uh, yesterday, you know, down the road, and you, know, you know, so I'm popping my imagination down there, and uh, and then I realized, oh, the pictures of the cows. There's some cows down there. And uh, so, of course, I didn't hear any mooing, but it just made me feel real good and relaxed. Ah, <laughs> Sandy, that's so lovely. It's true. And I think um, 
if you if you do that practice a lot, I mean, there's people I've met before who have the capacity to hear, like they can they can send their imagination, especially when you get really tapped into your environment and you really do start to know what's around you kind of in all radiuses. And then you can sort of send your awareness to different places and tap into those places, you know, to see what might be happening over there. And um, and that's lovely that, yeah, that you, you know your people, you know, like, you know, who's around you and the cows are here and this is over there <laughs> and that you can go to those places. So sweet, Sandy, thanks. Yeah, what an inspiration. <laughs> I'd love to hear, Aaron, it's your first time here. I'd love to hear if you, if there's anything you wanted to share or um, what inspired you to come today. Sure, yeah, I've been um, getting these emails about this Monday morning bracelet for a while, but I haven't been able to make it. I have uh, two little kids that I take to daycare and stuff. So being that it was a holiday, I could make it today. My husband's home and um, yeah, so I was just excited to make it. And um, yeah, the, the initial um, 10 foot sound, I was like, well, there isn't really any sound that close to me. Like everything was like a little bit just outside of 10 foot, it felt like. But um, I noticed this like big tree, it's kind of intermittently really windy and then still right now. And this big tree has these really like raspy leaves that when they brush against each other. So that was sort of my, my 10 foot sound that took a minute to to realize you know something that close to me and then later there was like some some flies showed up there like flies and bees that were buzzing <laughs> within 10 feet but um yeah it was it was really peaceful listening for the further sounds as well and same I was like imagining what was two miles away which is like this park that I go to sometimes so I was imagining the sounds there but um like you said mostly hearing traffic mm -hmm. Yeah. Aaron, where are you calling in from? From Sacramento. Sacramento. Okay, great. So it's still morning-ish there. Yeah, it's 9 a.m. Oh, it's sweet. Sweet. Yay. Yeah, I, that, it can, sometimes the, the nearest sounds can be the hardest to hear. And um, for me, when I'm, if I'm doing this practice um, just on my own, sometimes I have to go to my breath. You know, if there's nothing around me, I might, I might sort of check in with what my, you know, just he, I can hear my breath, you know um but yeah i love that you that you found even the bees again it's like the more we sort of stretch our ourselves and like we might not think there's a sound near that near us but there there usually is there's usually something um yeah i had some also some um the carpenter bees that aren't too far away nearby yeah sweet aaron thanks for coming i'm glad you got to make it today yeah great. Uh -huh. yeah for sure all right, folks, anybody else? Story, mystery? No? Well, um, yeah, next, I just wanna see if anyone else is anything. Virginia, Bluebird's busy, yay, yay. Ontario, yay, and Colorado, awesome, and Texas, yay, awesome. Wow, you have people from everywhere today. That's so lovely. Um, well, sweet, Molly's gonna be here next week, and um, yeah, I'll just encourage folks to keep keep practicing this throughout the week because really, you know, like what happened with Anne, like the more we practice this, the more tuned in you are. And even when you're, you know, out with friends or if you're going for a walk in a park with a friend, you can still, you know, even if you're in conversation, you can still be listening, right? That's part of the practice of like listening to what's nearby us and then also being able to listen to what's like two miles away. And so you can still be attentive to your friend you know, that's near you as you're walking while you're also being really aware of the environment around you, which is, you know, has many benefits, like safety is one, <laughs> right? Because sometimes I think I told you all that story once where there was, a, um, I'm not sure if I did share it here or somewhere else, but there, I went for a run on the boardwalk and, um, and I was coming around a corner and it's a spot on the boardwalk where it's this really neat part of the trail. It kind of goes, it makes it these little S curves kind of and it's pretty narrow. The, the shrubs are all kind of, you know, dense and around like close to you. And I was coming around the corner and I could see these two girls and their dog in front of me. And, um, and I didn't want to startle them. I know that can happen, especially on that part of the trail, you know, and I 
think I said something at first or I whistled or I did something and the girl in front heard me. And so she kind of stopped and the other girl just kept chatty, chatty, chatty. She was still talking, the one that was actually closest to me. And then I got like right up behind her almost. And she was like, ah, you know, she got really scared and she jumped off the trail and I was like, I'm sorry. And, and then I could hear her friend say, as I passed them, she's like, oh, you were so absorbed in your story. You must not have heard her, you know? And, and I really, that happens to us sometimes where we get so involved in our story. Like she literally didn't hear me coming up like right behind her. And I had to get like almost right on her before she was aware of me. And um, yeah, so this is a great practice to just keep going, like wherever you are, if you're going to the grocery store, as soon as you get out of your car, like send your hearing and your awareness, like even when you're in the grocery store, you know, that can be a really good one. When you're, when you're in these places that you don't think about sending your awareness out, it's just like, can you hear what's happening over in the deli? And then maybe what's happening over in, you know, the produce department and just kind of, you know, play with it, play with it. And so I'd love to hear what, what happens for folks. So. Have a really lovely week, everybody. Have a beautiful holiday. Um, yeah, blessings to everyone, wherever you are. And we'll see you next time. Thank you, Christy. Yeah. Have see a great everybody. weekend. Yeah, you too. You too. All right. See you. Bye, Sandy. See ya. Okay, bye. Bye. Okay.